We're all looking forward to a second season of Netflix's hit show, Squid Games. While we doubt it could be as surprising as the first, we would all be happy to get proven wrong. It's hard to imagine what could possibly top the six lethal rounds that were featured in the first season, but we'd love to try our hand at it anyway. I'm Kyle with Wicked Binge, and today we'll be pitching six children's games that we feel should be featured in season two of Squid Game. In honor of the six rounds, we have chosen six children's games that we feel could be a good basis for this competition. We'll include a bit about how the game is normally played, and then how we think it could be altered for higher stakes and greater cinematic quality. As a final touch, we'll be ranking them and presenting them to you in the order that we consider to be brutal to the most lethal. In this version of Season 2, we're going to address the theoretical American games. Yes, we all know the Korean games are the best, and there are plenty of potential Korean games left to be added in future games. But we'll be focusing on American games so that our American writing staff can personally vouch for the damage levels of the following choices. And we do like the idea of an American season, if only because it would confirm the fan theory that the games happen worldwide. So with that out of the way, let's jump right into our picks. Kicking things off, we have a classic, Hide and Seek. We probably don't have to explain the rules of this one to you, but we did promise. In this game, one person closes their eyes, counts to 100 while all the other players hide. If you're found, you lose. Only in this hypothetical version, if you're found, you're shot. We think hide and seek would be a great opportunity to show off the unique set design of an interior arena. It would have to be a large enough room that was well furnished and complex enough to give players plenty of options to hide from staff in. This also has the potential to be a cinematic scene that would be high tension and in all likelihood claustrophobic. There's the challenge of not only finding a hiding spot, but staying in it and staying quiet, even once the gunshots start going off. We also think there's a good dynamic to it. If there's one staff member, or maybe a small group of up to five, inside a large arena looking for players over the course of a few minutes, there are a lot less tactical decisions that would have to be made by people hiding. If you stay close to the center, you can quickly find one of the better spots. But this comes from the danger of knowing the staff will be starting their search there. Since statistically the staff members won't reach everyone, you could use your time to run to the edge of the arena, but risk not being properly hidden, or having to move around and evade the armed staff. There would be a lot of deaths in the first few minutes, but with a stricter time limit this may be one of the easiest games to survive. Moving into our second slot for most survivable pitch is Freeze Tag. We feel this would be the American response to Red Light Green Light. In the original game, one player or one team is considered it. They have to go around and tag people who are not it, shouting freeze. Frozen players can be rescued by a member of their own team by being tapped with a shout of unfreeze. It could take place in a similar enclosed arena for the first round of the Korean games. And much like that round, players would have to freeze in whatever position they were in when they got tagged. Moving while frozen means being shot. Being frozen at the end of the 10 minutes also means getting shot. What we like best about this idea is the dynamics of being able to save another player from elimination, while potentially risking your own life to do so. This would be a great test of team loyalty and morality in general for the participating players. In the center, we have Paintball. Bear with us for a moment. As a kid, you were probably more likely to have played laser tag than paintball, and laser tag would also be an option. We've chosen paintball specifically not only because of the popularity and dedication of participants, but also because we like the optics of it. The game involves running around with paintball guns in teams and trying to be the last ones to survive. While a very easy lethal version could just feature real guns, we think a more tense version of this actually operates like regular paintball. The color-coded teams would each have their own color of paintball ammo, and the vibrant fake wounds would excellently juxtapose the real shots that were coming. Better of course, if you get paint on you in the arena, you're not leaving it alive. It would be an interesting way to bring some of the bright colors we saw from the Korean sets into an Americanized arena. We also think it would be a great way to build more tension. Moving into the more dangerous games we offer for your consideration, we have The Floor is Lava. This is a children's game with one pretty consistent rule. The floor, 
is lava. That means you can never, under any circumstances, touch the floor. Furniture is fine, playground equipment is fine, dangerously unstable makeshift rafts are fine, just never the floor. Some people who played this as a kid also had one player who was designated Lava Monster, and had the ability to tag people, forcing them to go into the lava pit. Though that might have been a regional twist, since not everyone has heard of that. A more popular version involves someone inside yelling the floor is lava, and giving everyone 5 seconds to get off the ground in whatever way they can. In our proposed Squid Game version, it's more like an obstacle course. The floor isn't so much lava, and could be covered in a corrosive acid that you definitely don't want to get on your skin. Players have a set amount of time to move from one side of the arena to the other without burning themselves. There are no teams in this one, so theoretically everyone could live. We doubt that would be the case, however since the time limit would exacerbate whatever tensions already existed between players. Without a lot of room to pass one another, one player stumbling or causing delays could put a lot of strain on the people in the back, and the whole thing could start to feel like a free-for-all. Taking the penultimate spot for most lethal pitch is actually chess. We would lose a lot of time trying to explain all the rules of the board game chess in this video. It's a complex strategy game that's been played since the 6th century, meaning of course that it didn't originate in America. But it is wildly popular here. Most kids grow up knowing the basic rules of how to move and capture pieces without really grasping the intricacies of the tactics involved or the theory behind them. Despite the fact that this isn't a game necessarily geared towards kids, it's one that would feel just as nostalgic as the others listed. It would also cause an immediate sense of dread for most players upon seeing the board. It's chess board. After all, most adults haven't played chess since childhood, and most kids are bad at chess. We also like the idea that it would surprise the audience in one of the few ways we have left to surprise them, a non-violent game in round 6. It contrasts the ultra-violent combat from season 1 in a way we don't think anyone would be expecting. The rules to our version are simple enough. Two players sit down, and when one loses their king, they're eliminated. We know this doesn't seem like an obvious or even threatening choice, but we think it would be the perfect switch to psychological warfare. We also have a few arguments to make our case that it's scarier than it seems at first. Whether the finale contestants are friends or strangers, the dynamics between them would undoubtedly impact the game. There could be a large disparity in tactical thinking or experience. There could be emotional manipulation. Maybe neither of them are very familiar with the game and one is shot dead before either of them see the checkmate. If you're skeptical about the ability of chess to hold the attention of the audience, or seem tense without getting boring for non-chess players. This is actually something Netflix has experienced filming with their 2020 hit, Queen's Gambit. It's more entertaining than it sounds. And on the topic of those non-chess players, they would get extra context about the moves being played through the commentator hired to speak in the VIP box. Having an off-kilter and arguably low-energy game like chess in the mix is the perfect time to see how the American VIPs interact with the games differently. Chess is a perfect metaphor for the lazy, fat cat billionaire stereotype we've come to expect of the VIPs from Season 1. They'd be watching a game that is widely considered sophisticated to boost their ego, while also having the unfolding dynamics explained to them. The elegance of the game itself could be juxtaposed to the crude, violent entertainment and impending death of one of the players, all of which, of course, would go over their heads. While this one doesn't have the potential for high casualties like some of the other games on our list, it's also the only game we've chosen that caps how many people can make it out alive. Or does it? We never said what happens in the case of a draw or stalemate, but that's a question that would undoubtedly be looming over the players as they approach the end of the game. And finally, our most lethal game is King of the Hill. And no, we're not talking about the show. Though if binging that cartoon was one of the challenges, I think I would do pretty well, I tell you what. We're talking about the children's game where each child has to fight the other children to acquire and retain one spot on top of a small hill. It involves pushing, shoving, kicking, and would be the most hands-on violent game in this hypothetical second season, just as it was the most hands-on violent game in the playground growing up. We actually used to play this with the big playground dome, and it's amazing I never saw anyone killed or seriously concussed. Despite being the most physically aggressive game on our list, our lethal version has a psychological twist. To be crowned king or queen of the hill, you only have to maintain your position on top of the hill for 6 seconds. 
Once they've been crowned, the voice announces they have passed and they can clear out, leaving their throne open for another person to take it. There would be enough time on the clock to make sure everyone theoretically could pass the round, or almost everyone at the very least. That would make it all the more tragic when fighting breaks out and lives are slowly but surely lost to the countdown. Anyone who hasn't been a king or queen when the timer goes off is eliminated. And that's it, our picks for six children's games for season two of Squid Game. There are obviously a lot of games we didn't cover, so please let us know in the comments section which children's games you'd be most scared to see a lethal version of. Make sure to check out our other Squid Game videos, including Squid Game characters good to evil, Squid Game players dumb to brilliant, the Squid Game kill count, and Squid Game's most gruesome moments. And as always, stay wicked.